Shepherd of our soul, Shepherd of our soul, Savior of our soul, Lover of our soul. We are on the Lord's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brethren, 
If you take a look at the world today, you will see how the world has been engulfed with anxiety, anxiousness, materialistic, the materialistic attitude of humanity has, has taken over the entire world. Who have one car, want to have two cars, who married one wife, wants to marry the other wife, who had the house before, want to build more. There is competition of wealth here and there. This ought not to be so. That is not how God created it. That is why the Lord is telling you and I, as a believer, that we should be anxious for nothing. We should worry ourselves for nothing. When you are born again, you don't walk like a carnal man. You don't walk with your physical eyes anymore. You now walk with the eye of faith. That is why the word of God is coming again unto you and I this hour. He said, faith coming and hearing and hearing the word of God. And without faith, no man can please God. For you to be able to survive in this Christian faith that we are, you must need to be nourished and purified with the word of God. Be not anxious for nothing. Let your desire go be heaven. Let your desire go be closer to God. How will you be closer to God? By studying the word of God and following the word of God. You will have a peaceful life here on earth and you will also have a peaceful life in eternity to come. Brethren, why was the Lord telling us this? Thing is for us not to be choked by the cares and the materialistic things of life, so, so that we will not allow the, 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 the most uh, uh, important things that, that is needed for us to seek after to be shifted aside, but rather to seek, seek the kingdom of God in holiness, in righteousness, and every other thing that you need, He will provide them. My beloved brethren, one thing we all need to know, even before you gather this morning to force that words out of your mouth, that God, God knows your thought. He knows your needs. He knows what you are going through. Before you put down your need down, He knows what you are about to say. But there are spiritual requirements for all this to be fulfilled. What are those spiritual requirements? Absolute, complete obedience. That is why the Lord is admonishing you and I this hour that we should not run like the Gentiles, like the unbelievers, like those people who do not know God. We are walking by the eye of faith. Take a look at the entire life today. The reason why there is corruption everywhere, the reason why there is unrighteousness everywhere is because human are never satisfied. According to the economic law, he said human want an instant table. If you have been eating rice today, you want to eat beans. If you have been eating beans, you want to eat other varieties of food. But the Lord is telling you and I that you should not be anxious for these things. People have taken wrong decisions today because of they were anxious of life. They do not follow the word of God. They are into wrong marriage today. They have given birth to the wrong children. They have, they have, they have done things wrongly because they are anxious. Some will say, I'm getting old. I am scared of my age. What did you bring into this life? Your life your life is not measured according to the abundance of the things that you have acquired there. What matters is your relationship with God. What matters is how you are heavily focused, is how you are working at your salvation with fear and trembling. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Amen. What does it take to be anxious? To be anxious means to be nervous, to be worried. What does what does it take to be anxious? To be full of anxiety, disquiet, dis, disquietude, to be greatly concerned or solicitous, especially respecting something, something future or unknown. We all are worried. What shall become of my life tomorrow? What shall become of the life of my children tomorrow? Some people, they worry and worry and worry. They cannot even pray anymore. You worry about life partner. The Lord has given you a life partner. You worry, will I be able to conceive? You have conceived now. You worry, will I be able to deliver safely? You have delivered safely. Right now, you worry, the child is going up. This child will not do this. I pray this child will not die in the infancy, in this stage of infancy. The child has grown up now. The 
you, this child has started going to school. You worry as the child is going to school, you are praying, they do not let anything happen to this child. This will amount to hypertension. This will amount to heart failure. All you just need to do is to commit your ways into the hands of God. Commit your family into the hands of God and leave it unto God. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> If Job were having the kind of attitude that we are having now, Job would have fought free to the devil. Praise Master Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be, to, to, to be anxious? That unpleasant state of mental uneasiness. You worry to have a house. You worry to have a car. You are going to take loan now. You are worrying how to pay this loan. You are going through financial difficulties. The Bible is telling you and I this hour, be anxious for nothing. Don't create, give place to the devil. The Bible makes us understand in that Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, We are not ignorant of the diversities of the devil. Devil will give you an assignment. As you are busy doing that assignment, it will make you to forget the most important pressing need that you need to pay attention to. That is why we need to be spiritually focused. Focus. That is why we need to reawaken our spiritual consciousness so that we will not fall prey of the devil. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, Even from a patho patho pathological view of anxiousness, it makes us understand is a state of restless restlessness, agitation, often accompanied by a distressed sense of oppression, tightness in, in the stomach. Brethren, those days. I, 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 I wanted to read the course in the university, social works, they call it social works. And I was, I was advised that social work does not pay in a country like Nigeria. If you can travel abroad, it will, be, it will be very, very good. I did not really understand then what they were talking about. When you come to this Europe here, you see even in the abundance of what they have, even in the, even in the, in the, in the, in the, 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 the the stableness of their economy, you still see that the people are full with depression, people are full with heart failure, people are filled with hypertension, with all kinds of problems. Why? Because they worry themselves for nothing, because they are not spiritually focused, because they don't know God. When you put God first in everything, you will be relaxed, you will have that peace. Money cannot, money cannot give you peace. Money cannot give you joy. What gives you joy no. is godliness with contentment. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. Brethren, when we talk about things, we are talking about the materialistic things of life. When we talk about things, we are talking about things that exist separately. An entity, object, quality of concept, your career, whatsoever you choose to pursue. Maybe, for example, you want to become a medical doctor, you are worried. The Bible said all these are vanity. Vanity upon vanity equals to vanity, according to the book of Ecclesiastes. My beloved brethren, if you take a look at Solomon, Solomon tested what is called wealth. He tested what we call wisdom. There is nobody who, who is able to unravel the wisdom uh, Solomon was having. In all this, what happened? Solomon's heart went after a strange woman. Even the, the kingdom he lord over, as a result of his rebellion, God took about 10 tribes away from him and handed only one tribe to Solomon, so uh, to his son. What am I trying to make us to understand? That godliness is with contentment is a great thing. Keep seeking the kingdom of God, according to the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He said, keep seeking the kingdom of God in holiness and righteousness. That should be our our priority that should be our aim so that we will not fall prey of the devil remember he said we are not ignorance of the diversities of the devil who make us not to be ignorances of the diversities of the devil because the bible has educated you and i the bible has acquitted you and i with knowledge that is why the bible makes us understand says study to show the self and prove unto god for a workman needed not to be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Uh, when we talk about things, we are talking about an individual object 
autistic entity. When we talk about this, we are talking about whatever can be owned. When we talk about this, we are talking about faction. We are talking about the latest part of faction. When we talk about this, we are talking about clothes. We are talking about possession. We are talking about equipment. When we talk about this, we are talking about a problem. We are talking about dilemmas. We are talking about complicated factors. When we talk about this, we are talking about tangible substance that goes into the makeup of physical object. When we talk about things, we are talking about abstract. We are talking about substance of character. These are some of the things that the Lord is telling you and I that we should not be anxious of if you must survive in this Christian race. If you must be able to face the test of time, do not be anxious for anything. One thing at a time. As the day comes to you, try to live that day to the fullest because we don't know what the next day has for us. Praise Master. Jesus Christ. Uh, these two key need to be put into consideration as a true believer. The Bible makes us to understand. If you turn your Bible again, if you turn your Bible again to the book of to the book of Job chapter 1, verse 20 to 22. He said, then Job arose. We all know the story very well. He said, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 22. In all this, Job seemed not, not charge God foolishly. Many of God has asked God some foolish questions. God, why? God, why this? God, why that? Why am I sister? Why am I still barren? Why do, do I not have a life partner now? Why, why the, is it that I don't have a child? We have asked so many questions. God, why? The Bible is telling you and I this hour, be anxious for nothing. We brought nothing into this world. Certainly, we are taking nothing out of this world. That is where humanity is so foolish. That is where Satan has captured the source of humanity. If you study the Bible very well, according to the book of Matthew chapter 4, when you take it, when you, when you take it from verse 4 down, you will see the encounter of Jesus Christ with the devil. The four, you see what he told Jesus Christ. He said, if you will bow down and worship me, I will give you the entire world. I will give you, can't you see the beauty of this world? Jesus Christ makes it. Uh, 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 make Satan to understand that these are not the most pressing need. This is not what I want. This is not my vision of earth. I did not come to this earth to seek materialistic things of life. I did not come to this earth to acquire the, 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 the wealth of life. But I have come to save souls. I have come to, to redeem souls. I have come to lead people to the light. That is why the Bible makes us understand in the book of John chapter 8, verse 12, he said, and he said unto them, I am the light. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. You said you are born again, but you are, your mentality, your state of reasoning is not different from the people of the world. What now makes you the child of God? I pray as many of us that will hear this word this hour, who will reawaken our spiritual consciousness and, and have a rethink on the way we handle issues and react to issues. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, brethren, what is the Lord telling you and I? The Bible makes us to understand in the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 15. He said, And he said unto them, Take heed, take heed, take heed, and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Your life that you are living now does not consist of the abundance of the things that you possess. What, what, what matters a lot is your quality relationship with God, is how you are spiritually focused concerning the, 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 the coming of the Lord. That is what matters to us. I have seen people dying, living chains of cars, and see people dying, living estate, living all and all. No one was buried with him or her. That is to tell you the vanities of life. But we humanity, we forget so easily. In Jeremiah chapter 45, verse 5, it says, Seek thou great things for the self, seek them not. 
Jeremiah 45, verse 5. Seekest thou great things for the self? Seek them not. The greater thing that you need to see is to keep seeking the kingdom of God and keep walking at your salvation with fear and trembling. That is the greater thing that you need to see. That is why the Bible makes us understand in the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 36. It says, For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And lose his soul. Also, your soul is more precious than God. That soul, you need to guide it jealously. You need to feed your soul. You need to nourish your soul. You need to reawaken your, your, the spiritual consciousness of your soul. Speak to your soul so that you will not be lured into destruction, into doom. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Uh, Amen. Yeah. Brethren, Anxiousness and anxiety lead to conversiousness. It makes you to begin to, to, to defy the word of God and begin to create a niche for yourself, a, to create an atmosphere for you to, to embezzle, to lie, to, to, to become conversious. This ought not to be so. We need to be really, really be careful so that we will not fall into the hands of the devil. The Bible says, what shall a man give in exchange of his soul? Your soul is more precious. The soul, all you need to do is to keep praying for that, your child. Don't worry over them. The Lord that gave them to you will take care of them. And you not a believer, and you not a child of God. Don't allow Satan to give you an assignment. Don't allow Satan to engage you with that precious time that you have been using to glorify God, that you have been using to seek praises unto God. All you just need to do is for you to be obedient to the word of God. And the glory and the pillar of cloud of God will envelop you my entire household. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Brethren, the Bible makes us to understand if you turn your Bible again to, to, to the book of Luke chapter 8, verse 14. Luke chapter 8, verse 14. It says, that which fell, amen. 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 Luke chapter 8, verse 14. Yeah. It says, that which fell among us are they which, when they have heard, they go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no, no fruit to, to perfection. What is the Bible making you and I to understand? Many of us have heard the word of God. If we take a look at this ministry today and take a look at the number of people that have come and gone, I don't think Zoom would, 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 would contain us anymore. We would have been looking for another platform. A set of new people are coming every day and the old ones are leaving. This ought not to be so. Why? Because the Bible makes us understand in that Luke chapter 8, verse 14. It says, which fell among tongues and they which they have heard, they go forth and are choked with the cares, riches, and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Did you want to bring fruit to perfection? Do not worry yourself with the cares of this world. One thing at a time. Handle issues the way they, they come. Be contented with each day. Live today as if tomorrow will never come. I'm not trying to tell you that it's, it's wrong for you to be rich. I'm not trying to tell you you have to be poor. No. Get me, be in the spirit with me. What I'm trying to make you to understand whatsoever that will make you to, to, to be in that state of uneasiness, that will not make you to be so obsessed, that will not make you to, to, to think all through the night. You will not be able to pray. You will not be able to study the word of God. You will not be able to reason properly. Let those things be taken out of your mind. All you need to do, bring your petition before God and leave them there. Don't pray the prayer and you are also working with God to solve the problem. No. All you need to do is to fulfill your own side of the contract. What is your own side of the contract? Obedience. The key. You obey the word of God by praying to God who knoweth all things and who answereth all things, then God will bring that thing into, into reality and do it for you. Don't be anxious for nothing. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Um, Brethren, if you study the Bible very well, the Bible makes us to understand in the book of Joshua chapter 7 verse 21. It says, when I saw among his spoils a godly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a weight of gold of 50, of 50 shekels, wait, wait, then I converted them, I took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of the tent and the silver under it. Brethren, was it that Achan, this 
the Bible was what is a kind of this part of this scripture is talking about. Who, who brought destruction into the camp of Israel by disobeying the word of God. Achan was anxious. He wants to be rich. He wants to be wealthy. Not that he was hungry, not that he was lacking anything, but he flattered the word, uh, 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 disobeyed the word of God and, and did his own and follow his own conversion way. At the end of the day, he brought destruction into himself and his entire family. Don't be anxious for anything because when you are anxious, any decision you took when you are anxious is totally outside the, the, the divine plan and purpose of God for your life. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm rounding up now. If you turn your Bible to the book of First Timothy, chapter 6, from 6 to 9, it says, But godliness with contentment, with whatever you have now, be contented with it. If more come, is good. But don't go out of the way of God and you, you want to step on toes, you want to do things that does not glorify God in order to you to acquire the cares and the pleasures of life. No, pleasure is good. And the things to live life, to make life pleasurable is good. But what I'm trying to make you to understand is don't be anxious, don't be curious of, the, of, 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 of what you don't have. Make do with what you have. If it is pure God has provided for you, thank God and eat it to the glory of his name. If it is rice, thank God and make use of it. If whatsoever God has provided for you as a means of living, accept it with all faith. No matter the job that you are doing, what matters a lot to you and I is for us to keep seeking the kingdom of God in holiness and righteousness. Amen. Amen. In that first Timothy chapter 6 from 6 to 9, it says, But godliness with contentment is a great gain. When you have this spirit in you, you will not be anxious for anything. Anxiety will not possess your soul. He said, For we brought nothing into this world. It is certain we are carrying nothing out of it. We take nothing out of this world. And having food, note it very well. First Timothy chapter 6, 8. He said, Having food and raiment, let us deal with content. Let us be there with content. Now, he said that he said at the day that we be rich, fall into temptation and snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. You are anxious to be rich. You are anxious to to build the house now, and you don't have the will with all at that particular time to build the house. What do you need to do? If you are working, you'll be lying. If you are working, you begin to take bribe. In order for you just to measure up, in order for you to acquire that cloth. Praise the Lord. Um, he said, For they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. I always use myself as an example. In this country where I am, before you get a document, either you get married to a white woman or you, you have to uh, uh, sleep with a woman and have a child with a woman. These are the two fastest and easiest way to get document. Brethren, this, there was a time in my life I was so anxious, I was so desperate. What do I need to do? Jumping from one woman to the other, be crafty, doing all sorts of things to make sure that you get these things. These are what the Bible is talking about. If I had died during that process, where will I have, where will I have end today? I would have left all and my enemy would have been swimming, swimming in hell. That is, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Keep seeking the kingdom of God in holiness and righteousness. I'm rounding up now. The Bible makes us to understand in Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 45, verse 5. It says, Seekest thou great things for the self? Seek them not. Rather, keep seeking the kingdom of God in holiness and righteousness. Amen. Are you there? You have not yet given your life unto Jesus. You have not yet come to the realization of the truth. The Lord is knocking at the door of your heart. Come unto him this hour. And if I say this prayer of confession after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you this morning. I know I am a wretched sinner. I know I have no body of standing before you. Have mercy upon me. Deliver me, O Lord, from every spirit of anxiety, anxiousness. Deliver me, Lord, from every spirit of compassionness. 
take them away out of my life, take my name away from the book of death and let me be written in the book of life. I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Take total control and let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen. You have just said that brief prayer of confession that will rejoice over your soul. And I pray that you will not go back again to that state of anxiety and, and be anxious for me. For, for the anxious of the materialistic things of life, but rather you will continue to seek the kingdom of God in holiness and righteousness. Amen. Amen. I pray with you, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring this one before you. I ask the Lord that you strengthen them, you empower them, you grant them the grace and strength of the Lord to remain in the truth. Father, Satan will not have their soul in the mighty name of Jesus. I put your seal upon their life. This one will not be used against them on the last day. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, in, in the next few minutes, let's open our mouth and talk to Bishop of a soul, shepherd of a soul. 